and we are all the way to lecture 19 and we're going to begin with section 22.4 in your textbook and we'll start with organs of the female reproductive system. Notice then we're starting off with the ovaries and we'll be spending a fair amount of time on the ovaries. We're beginning then within the ovaries with these structures called primordial follicles. And you'll recall you're familiar with these from lab by now. So to your handout then, we have cells called primary oocytes. And remember an oocyte is an egg cell. And remember that each follicle, no matter what stage of follicle, each follicle always contains a single oocyte. And now we're talking about the fact that a primordial follicle is made up of a single primary oocyte. And we'll talk more about this in a couple of minutes. But again, a primordial follicle is made up of a primary oocyte plus a surrounding layer of relatively few cells called follicular cells. And on your outline then, the primary oocyte plus the follicular cells make up a primordial follicle. This takes us to looking at oogenesis. And remember the OO, when you see it, always implies egg. Genesis, of course, making something. And so oogenesis is the process of making egg cells. Oogenesis again the process of making egg cells. This process is diagrammed on page 843 at the top of the page, figure 2221. And before we get into details, if you look at this figure, it should look kind of familiar. It again is showing oogenesis, which is a type of meiosis. I have a train coming by again. I'm going to wait until it passes, so hang on. And we're back. And so again, oogenesis is a type of meiosis. Meiosis, remember, produces sperm or egg cells. And so again, figure 2221 should look very much like, and I suggest you don't go back to it right now, but just jot down, figure 2221 should look very much like figure 22.1 
which was a general diagram of meiosis. And it should also look very similar to figure 22.8. which was a diagram of a type of meiosis called spermatogenesis. So we've talked about, and we've looked at diagrams showing, we've looked at figures showing meiosis in general, meiosis in males, and now we're looking at oogenesis, meiosis in females. Let's take a look at the details of oogenesis in figure 22.21. And so notice we're starting again with that primary oocyte that we mentioned just a couple of minutes ago. And remember, anytime we have meiosis going on, we begin with the cell which is diploid, which has 46 chromosomes. So notice underneath the diagram of the primary oocyte, there's a note that this oocyte, this primary oocyte is diploid, has 46 chromosomes. And also notice we're being told, we're being reminded actually, because this is the third time we've seen it now, that each of those 46 chromosomes is made up of two sister chromatids. Then, of course, we're going to have meiosis 1 occurring. And so notice the arrow now leading to a cell labeled up at the top first meiotic division. And so again, this is meiosis 1 that's going on here. And recall, we're not seeing all of the phases, so they're not showing prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 1. But also recall now, those two arrows coming away from the cell. And recall that at the end of meiosis 1, we have two cells, two daughter cells, if you will, that have been produced. Recall each of those two cells has 23 chromosomes. So each is haploid. And recall also at this point, each chromatid is still made up of those two sister chromatids. And just to remind everyone, the chromosome is that kind of X-shaped structure, or are those X-shaped structures that we're seeing. And each sister chromatid then is going to be half of one of those X-shaped structures. And so we have now the cells produced, the two cells produced by meiosis one. But notice here now, when we're talking about oogenesis, there's a difference compared to what happened at this point in spermatogenesis. And you'll see then that the result of meiosis one is the production of a cell called a secondary oocyte and the production of a cell called a first polar body. And as you can see from the figure, the secondary oocyte is very large. The first polar body is relatively small. And you might want to jot down here in your notes the function of this, the function of that first polar body. is simply to remove, to get rid of 23 chromosomes. 
the function again of that first polar body is simply to remove 23 of those 46 chromosomes that we started with. And let's now go ahead and see what happens to that first polar body. And you can see two different things, and it doesn't really matter which one happens. So in some cases, the arrow to the top, the first polar body degenerates. In other cases, the first polar body, which remember was produced by meiosis one, that first polar body now undergoes meiosis two, undergoes the second meiotic division, But when this happens, the two resulting cells, the two resulting polar bodies also degenerate, also break apart, also disintegrate. So again, the point here is that these polar bodies are not important other than having removed 23 chromosomes. What we're really interested in here is the secondary oocyte, and so back up towards the top of the diagram now. And notice if fertilization occurs, it's this secondary oocyte that is fertilized. You can see that the secondary oocyte has its 23 chromosomes. Recall the sperm cell also has its 23 chromosomes. And as a result of fertilization, we're back to a single cell containing 46 chromosomes. We're back to our normal number, if you will, of chromosomes. This cell then undergoes meiosis II, undergoes the second meiotic division. Again, if fertilization occurs, and we get as a result, a second polar body, which again degenerates. And the really important thing now, we get our cell called a zygote, a fertilized egg cell containing 46 chromosomes. Note 23 from the father, 23 from the mother, and as always at the end of this process of meiosis, each sister chromatid has now become an independent chromosome. And we'll stop here with lecture 19.